wonder if anyone else thinks that the Simpsons can predict the future. What up, everybody, and welcome to the FB and Goop Show. I'm FB. Hey, I'm the Goop. Sponsored by the Good Time Tavern of Livermore, California. How's the Goop? The Goop is excellent. I am super psyched. I, unfortunately, no Caitlin Clark this week, but I'm pumped to talk about Packers, Niners, the call to Uncle Drew, or maybe it's just regular Drew. I'm not sure. Just call Drew. That's all just I know. Call Drew. Just call Drew. Just but call uh, Drew. I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make everyone wait for football, and we should go to the only uh, sport that's actually in playoffs right now. So take it away, FB. Uh, man, NASCAR. We had our the first race of the playoffs, <clears throat> and when it you know, you lose four at a time. We have three races here, three. You know what I mean? It's kind of a – the playoffs are very interesting. And uh, this week was not good for Chase Briscoe and uh, Kyle Larson. Both uh, both did not finish the race. So there's Wreck huge it. hits. For uh, Briscoe, that's win time. They wrecked. Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, to me, it looked like a tire went down. I didn't get really – I felt like a good explanation, but it looked like a tire had gone down. They said he kind of just took the turn wrong and then he just swept out and then slammed into the thing. I was like, damn, he just did that instantly. Um, but as he was uh, finishing his crash, Chase Briscoe decided to come in and smash right into him. So both of the, both guys for the, for the playoffs, you know, you know, nobody else hit Kyle Larson. Everybody else got around him. And then that playoff guy just smashed into him. I was like, Wow, two playoff guys smashed into each other. That's not good. So those two took devastating uh, hits in the points. Uh, All right. So well, that's bad for them. Uh, how's the well? Who won the race? And how did Tyler Reddick do? I guess are my next two questions. Uh Reddick. Um, I I was quite happy. Reddick is third in the playoff points now. Finished sixth, and he was way back for the whole race. He was either driving safe and trying to stay out of the may the mayhem or the chaos. And he was like, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19 up to 13th, you know? And so he played it safe and, and he, as, as well, he did because there was Rex in front of him. And I think that's how he got the sixth place. You know what I mean? So, uh, Joey Logano won the race. Joey is now moved on to the next stage. Is so he playoff Joey now? Playoff, playoff Joey. Joey. He's good to move <laughs> on. He can, uh, he can enjoy the next, you know what? He can enjoy having to go to these next couple of races that are scary and not worry about it. So um, it's good to get a win to clinch, right? Yeah, Next he's stage, in. He's good clinch. for Joy Logano. Uh, Reddick, um, I believe Reddick feels comfortable in the next two races, so I think we're good um, to just stay in the points. You don't need to win if you're in third place. Top eight, move on, or the top 12, move on. or the, You know what I mean? So I think Reddick's in a good spot. Uh, it was uh, it was a good race. Atlanta's very scary because you just get to drive full speed the whole time. It's like a super speedway on a mile-and-a-half track. So it's it the you know Rex can be brutal there. So yeah, we survived it. One down, a couple more to go. Talladega's coming soon. I will be at Talladega. I will take a Reddick victory at Talladega. That would make my I I to so all those races I went to to watch Gordon race. I never saw a victory. I saw him lead a whole race once, a lap down. <laughs> so even though he was in front, he was one whole lap down. I was like, well, this is ridiculous. And I've seen him take second and third at like Infineon or Sears point, but never see, I would, if I could go see Tyler Reddick win a race on my first time there, he would do something Jeff Gordon has never done for me. And then I get to spend three days at Talladega camping. So that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, listen, call drew. Let's call drew. That's how we should move on from every topic from now on. We'll just call drew and drew can help us move on. I'm telling you. Uh, listen, Niners look good. Yeah, I'd rather. Well, I want to. Last week we did chronological, and I think we should start with the Packers because, like, honestly, you guys look pretty good too against a solid Eagles team. We're going NFL. If anyone hasn't realized yet, we're going NFL. Packers, Eagles. Bad news at the end of the game for the Packers, but overall, classic game. Uh, overall, good game. Uh, bad news for the Packers. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you're going to have injuries, get them over Get them over with right away. You know, beginning of the year is better than the end of the year. Uh, each team is going to play through adversity. We both know this. Uh, all the teams are going to play through adversity. 
The Cleveland Browns are probably going to lose Deshaun Watson. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to have adversity throughout. <laughs> they the hope they lose Deshaun Watson. They hope they lose Deshaun Watson. <laughs> yeah, so listen, but what I did see, I saw I saw Josh Jacobs perform really well in the second half when he's going to be needed if the Packers play well in the first half. Um, yeah, no, it looks like your line, while possibly suspect in pass protection, could be really good in the second half run blocking. Rashid Walker, while I don't like his footwork, I do like when he goes forward at people. Right. Yeah. As your as your left tackle, so that's interesting to me. I there was a few other things that I wrote down. I mean, most of them involve uh, Saquon Barkley being from Penn State and destroying the Packers. So that was just really fun for me. Yeah, it was uh, it was eye opening, especially for this new defense but I still saw a defense that blitzed a lot more than I'm used to seeing the Packers blitz um, swarm to the ball more than I've ever seen the Packers swarm to the ball and hit harder. You got to start somewhere. Cause these are things that we've never done. You know what I mean? It so, sound like things like the Niners and Steelers kind of do swarm. Yeah, you know, it's like that a, a, a bears kind of defense really, you know, Hit you, hit you in the mouth kind of defense, you know? So Normally, I'd be like old school Bears, but they, uh, we'll talk about that later. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, no, I, I, you know, listen, some of the rookies on defense played well. That Bullard had 11 tackles. I heard Edron Cooper's name a few times. Quay Walker and Rashawn Gary still look like they're, you know, A's in their position. So, so it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty obvious you, the Packers are a good team. I mean – Obviously, no. I'm looking at a certain positions. Uh, your secondary look didn't look as good as it should, to be honest with you, which is well, shocking. Like, is there where's the uh, where's the age thing for cornerbacks? You know, running backs they hit thirty. Like, where's Jair Alexander's uh, cliff? Could it happen this year? I'd love for that to happen. No, I don't think so. I think he played against probably one of the most difficult receivers to guard, and somebody who's so is yeah. you know. It was so much reminds me of Sterling Sharp, somebody who's just so strong yet so fast and ran really good routes, you know. And like it's, you can't play bump and run against him because he'll just toss you to the ground and you and you and you can't out muscle him to the ball because his hands are apparently so strong, you know what I mean? So it's like, like yeah, you know what I mean? So not the easiest receiver to go up against in week one. I'm sure every cornerback that's got to go up against AJ Brown goes, damn, I got to go up against AJ Brown today. That's going to be a difficult matchup. And it was, he got some, he got an interception. It's because Hertz isn't very good. In my opinion, I don't think Hertz is as good as everybody says he is. I, I just don't. So you still have things to prove. Uh, even uh, ESPN's Dan Orlovsky said that he's making decisions wrong, that he's made right the first three years of his career. So I, I feel like maybe that's mental. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Philadelphia has got to him. He's like, these guys are nuts. I think the Packers on defense played him well. He didn't have a lot of yards on the ground wherever he went. Rashawn Gary was or Keyshawn Nixon was. So somebody was always watching. I love Keyshawn Nixon. He's yeah. my favorite backer in the last few years. He's the man. I agree. Right. Um. Yeah, I I I think the Packers could have won that game. That that game could have won anyway. I really do. So I, I'm not too mad at the Packers. Um, am I nervous about? Malik Willis. Next two games aren't that hard. Goddamn right you are. <laughs> yeah, I am a little bit, but the next two games aren't that hard. So I'm like, you know, Malik with the Titan revenge game in two weeks and the Colts man, come on. If we can contain Anthony Richardson, maybe we can put up some points against the Colts. I don't know. We'll see. They're going to be interesting. Yeah. Can you turn up the volume on your end? Sure. I'm just wondering um, if it helps. I'm turned up. Why am I not yelling enough? You're usually not. Usually I yell a lot more. You usually you should yell more. And it's Niner time, so I'm about to yell all sorts of all over the place. You should start yelling because it's Niner time. Everybody's uh, so thrilled. Well, no, you guys looked very good. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> um, no, I thought you guys came right back into form. Actually, um, even without McCaffrey, you're still running the ball. You you played Trent Williams just a little bit, not the whole game. I thought that was smart. Um, he played every snap till he needed to run out for an IV at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and then he missed three plays, came back in, and finished the game. Ah, uh, so Trent he is Williams is an player. absolute beast, monster. No, he is. 
definitely helps your team out tremendously. Right. And now that we have number 77, Dominic Cooney, we've got two beats on the offensive line. And that's just going to be too much for people to handle. The, the, you see the Jets had to pull a fifth defensive lineman to try to stop the run. J.P. Mason, Jordan Mason, just had, was having none of it. They were following Cooney. They were following Trent Williams. George Kittle was blocking the fuck out of everybody. It was fantastic. Like, honestly, when, when the Niners offensive line plays like that, we're going to be tough to beat. And, we, and you know that. Uh, and we can go ahead and talk about the defense. The defense played well. Aaron Rodgers, actually, not bad, to be honest with you. He had two or three throws where you saw the glimmer in his eye where he was like, you know what? Maybe I can play football on drugs. And then all sorts of things went wrong. Mostly, we just kept the ball. I mean, O-line, run the ball. Shanahan, that's what he wants to do. And we did exactly what we wanted. I mean, obviously, we could four drives. I give a Sauce Gardner applaud for a nice defensive play on third down. Quinn and Williams had a few uh, <laughs> had a few pressures that made Purdy kind of release something earlier than he wanted to. But yeah, all in all, not a lot of stuff to hate. Ayuk was uh, not great. I guess that'll uh, kind of link into what all the other late arriving receivers did. They were kind of like six for eighty. I mean, I don't know how many passes C.D. Lamb dropped or Jamar Chase dropped, but Ayuk dropped the first one, which was a huge 25-yard gain at least, and bobbled the second one. So we'll see. I'm sure he'll be fine by next week. So, what? Yeah. Word up, Niners. Word up, Niners. Go, yeah, you guys looked good. You uh, We didn't no. hit Aaron Rodgers enough. That was the only thing that I feel like we could have done better. Well, right. Well, you didn't let him on Both the field. Both like yeah, he wasn't on the field that much. And then when, you know, then like the quitter he is, he didn't even finish the game. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor finished the game. Who I, I thought put together an excellent drive and might be considered, you know, maybe a starter uh, down the road for the Jets. He's way better than Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah, I think they need to do some work on the line still a little bit. I don't know. They do. Uh, Brees Hall looked good. Brees Hall looked good. Garrett Wilson looked fantastic. When the ball was um, there for him to catch, yeah, it was good for him I to just go. Don't, there's not enough else around there. Whenever you can concentrate on two or three guys, then, you know, when you do that with us, we got Jawan Jennings for third down Jawan, and even uh, big number 44, Juice. Juice right, had right, a couple right. of long plays. So I don't yeah, know Alan that. Lazard can't be your second receiver. <laughs> he can't be the emergency guy. <laughs> Even yeah. though he, in a pinch he got two touchdowns, like 100 yards, he probably ruined my fantasy no. fan goal. He can be wide receiver three. That's fine. He just can't be that, you know. We've covered everyone else. What else do we do? I guess we cover Lazard. Well, yeah, yeah, they're still waiting for Mike Williams to really come back completely healthy. And even though, even when he gets back, he's only good for 13 games. So I don't really put much weight on him. You know what I mean? Sure, not much. Yeah, so... I don't know. What else you got? Well, I'm just saying, uh, well, not much. Moody, six for six in field goals. That's always good to have a confident field goal kicker. But, yeah, yeah. the Jet, Jets now the uh, sole sole possessor of last, last place in the AFC East. Yes. I feel like it's time to call Drew. It's time to call <laughs> Drew, man. Listen, man, Miami still won that game, too. They did win that game. They did. Even though Tyreek Hill was in handcuffs hours before. Just right. still pulled the win off. Still got an 80-yard touchdown. That's when you know the man's are too professional. That's right. I, lo I love ignoring the fact that two guys were idiots on the side of the road, but one of them scored an 80-yard touchdown. I love that. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> got to be taken off fire. in handcuffs by his own teammate. Let's go, man. <laughs> That oh, 80 yard touchdown was illegal. First of all, you cannot fuck with Kalias Campbell. Walter Payton winning man of the year. That guy's like the biggest teddy bear in the world. Handcuffing that guy was just dumb by then. That's that's where they I can see handcuffing a black guy in a Ferrari in Miami Dade County. That shit happens. <laughs> On a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, Kalias Campbell, man, that guy's a big teddy bear. Right. Walter Payton man of the year. Yeah, those are tough to come by. Those are earned. Those are earned. Like, you have like to earn Walter those. Barney. 
Yeah, you don't it's, get the you don't get the, <laughs> you don't get the Walter Payton uh, Award, Man of the Year Award, without being a decent person. Hey, uh, Antonio Brown was never going to win. Oh yeah, him and Le'Veon started never going to win the Walter too. Payton. <laughs> great man of the year award yeah no that's not gonna happen <laughs> right on so nice um, win by miami um i think i think i want to go on to uh we talked to last week about the new quarterbacks and how they were gonna do i think everyone wants to know about that sure we had we had three i'm gonna give you some stats and i'll let you uh pick out which one you want to start with we've got caleb williams who we know you're interested in 50 percent completion percentage no rushings no touchdowns Bo Nix, 3.1 average yards per attempt, two picks. And Jaden Daniels was respectable with a like 70% completion percentage. He, and he ran a lot, but he ran a lot after looking at no one. So <laughs> he ran for 88 yards and two touchdowns. So he was looking at something. He was looking at the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. See, I'm glad he's on my fantasy team. That's for sure. Right. So, uh, you know, I would love to start with Caleb Williams and the fact that I sat here listening to all those Bears fans uh, throughout preseason saying it's the coming of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. You got to be pissed, though, that somehow they won with a punt return, a pick six, and like whatever, <laughs> a bunch of other garbage. Well, doesn't that sound like the Chicago Bears of old still got a shitty quarterback, but Devin Hester's taken back – Punt returns and and uh, Tillman is taking back uh, interceptions for touchdowns. That sounds correct to me. And then they go out there on offense and they put up a dismal 187 total yards, no touchdowns, and they've won 17 to three. You know, it's like what the hell? So Man. that's what I saw. I saw uh, I saw fingernails painted with Bears logos on them. I said that might not work in pro football. We're going to find uh, out, at, though. At some point, you have to stop worrying about social media and, like, study the plays. Well, Kyle, if you learned anything from Kyler Murray so far, study the plays. Because <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. only got three three passes thrown his way. And I don't understand how Marvin Harrison Jr. only gets three passes all thrown right. his way. That wasn't if in the he's playbook. open all the time. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. how can you tell me that the defensive backs during training camp said nobody can guard him yet? Kyler Murray can't find him more than three times open. <laughs> I'm just confused. So uh, I'm happy to see Caleb Williams come down to earth. They still won. They're ahead of the Packers in the record. Yet it's week one. The last, the last place Packers. The last place Green Bay Packers with. Malik Willis is the starting quarterback for the next <laughs> might be the trade of the century. If we win both games, because Malik Willis just gives himself up for the next two weeks. You know uh, what I mean? Get two wins out of this. Yeah. We're totally worth a seventh round pick. Totally worth a seven round pick. If he, you know, if he does the Anthony Richardson and he throws a touchdown, but he runs for two, <laughs> you know what I mean? In like 125 yards, like right. we weren't expecting that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you weren't. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, Caleb Williams, definitely a letdown. Hey, Drew Bo Nix, him and Sean, they just had a rough night that Sunday night. You know what I mean? They probably didn't talk after it. They probably had dinner separate. <laughs> well, I just feel bad. I mean, first uh, NFL start in Seattle, the second or third loudest stadium in the league. Yeah, that's yeah. a rough one, man. That's a tough start. Right, guess what? First start, and you're going to play death. Good luck. Good luck. You won't hear anything. It's all hand signals from this point out. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. We've got to tell you. It's all hand signals day one. Right. Shit. Okay. So you're saying game two for Bo Nix is definitely going to be an improvement. I mean, it should be. Uh, but but I'll be honest. I I still want to pick up people and drop Cortland Sutton just, just because. <laughs> right. I know it sounds like – I know it sounds really brutal, but week one, I don't know. If I was spending money, I wouldn't spend money. Well, how many uh, how many times has Cortland Sutton been drafted in the last five years in fantasy football, and then dropped after week eight, anyways? <laughs> and picked up and released and picked yeah, up. Yeah, picked up and released because people are like, "I know he's good. Just look right. at the ball." <laughs> but fantasy questioned me this: I feel like if I kept Cortland Sutton and my second round pick Drake London, I'm questioning which one has a better year. I think it might be Cortland Sutton. <laughs> no, because it's got to work with Cousins. It's got to. 
man, Cousins has no Achilles. Did you see him trying to plant? Like yeah. he just there's no there's nothing behind his throws. It's he needs to take like six more weeks off. Let put Penix Jr. in there for now. Do it. Do it. That's why you drafted him. Sure. Be a starting need- quarterback in the NFL. Why not? Yeah, I mean, I can vouch for 40 year olds don't recover from Achilles very well. Well, yeah, we saw it on Monday night. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> we did. Um, okay, so quarterbacks, they uh they they did not impress. Uh, J- Daniel's impressed from Washington. I thought for his first game out there playing against the Tampa Bay. Yes, right. they lost, and but I, and I don't think uh I don't think Kingsbury's offense did Jan- Daniels any favors, to be honest with no. you. I think that needs to get better, to be honest, to use uh what Daniels got. So yeah, Daniels looks the best right now. Out of those three, yes, for sure. <laughs> uh so are we gonna talk about some other young players that played this week? Who who who, we, who was your best? We sure could. I mean, I was gonna talk about you know, just the best performance in general. Okay. And, uh, sure. Uh, for young players, Xavier Worthy in Kansas City is on the list, of course. Sure. Um, Jamison Williams in Detroit, I believe, is on that list. For uh, this being then, his first real season. Right. And then I just give uh, Philadelphia and the Niners and Dallas credit for beating supposedly good teams. Sure. That's fine. So, I, mean, I Xavier Worthy. I'm. I, he. He. Uh, he might be that he missing was piece. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah. <laughs> if if they get their Tyreek Hill piece back, that offense opens up to scary again. Yeah. So it, it does. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of afraid of a uh, Kansas City's Kansas City's potential. Yeah, I thought the Ravens were going to come out and win the game. And Xavier Worthy showed you the reason that they're probably never going to win a game Ravens again against Kansas much. City. They lost by this much. I'm stressing myself. <laughs> yeah, they didn't lose by much, man. Uh, uh, Isaiah Likely, excellent game. We said Isaiah Likely when we were talking about hey, somebody who. Congratulations to you for drafting him originally. Yes. Yeah, no, no, I didn't start him. Because I didn't draft him in the starting tight end, tight end position, but he's starting next week for me. That's for sure. Don't get Cade. Suck it. <laughs> Suck it. Uh, Isaiah likely for me. I had well, I had that Ferguson kid out of Dallas, and he got injured. So Isaiah likely starting anyways. But wow, oh, that's easy for you. Yeah, easy. But at the same time, I think he was starting anyways. I don't know. You know, I, I you know, we'll see. Uh, Harrison Jr. Neighbors not very good starts. Uh, and that Brian Thomas kid for Jags, he he started off pretty well. You he know, you catch all Mr. four Relevant passes thrown to you. Pass. Yeah, touchdown. Yep. He got a 41-yard pass interference call that was probably a touchdown if they hadn't have done the pass interference. So that would have been two touchdowns and 80 yards and five for five. So good start for Brian Thomas Jr. for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. So you're saying once you take Jamison Williams, I should take Brian Thomas? Yeah, because I think that might be a start of something special there. I just don't just think for the I fact that mind. he went four for four, man. That's you know, Marvin Harrison one for three. He didn't get the ball. I mean, he, apparently he was not unab- unable to get the ball the other two times. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah, four for four is uh the coaches start drawing up plays for you. Hell yeah! So I definitely pick him up. I think you know. You want to talk about Detroit? They started off pretty well. Rams look good, but Detroit, man, that offensive line's pretty good. Ran over the Rams. Uh, speaking of linemen and new guys, I want to give a little shout out to Joe Alt. The uh, Chargers decided not to take a wide receiver with their draft pick, and Joe yeah. Alt performed really well against uh, the new defensive end from the Raiders. Not Max. Yeah, not, not Max, Max or Max. He didn't line up against Max. No. Okay. Well, you're saying Joe played well. Joe played well. So Lyman, Lyman shot out. I saw, uh, I saw an article of the top 10 offensive rookies of the week. And unbelievably enough, Joe was number three. I didn't read it. Cause I was looking for receivers and running backs and people like Dominic that. But, 
but apparently Joe played really well. So good for Joe. Hey, listen, stud brought a Notre Dame, right? They already said he, he should have been the first offensive lineman taken. Was he the first offensive lineman taken? If he can hit a lineman, you do well in the NFL. Oh man. If you can hit a lineman in the NFL, good job, Harbaugh. Yep. And like you said, lines look like they started off plus the addition of Williamson. Shoo. I do have one last question for you, I believe. Okay. Unless you have more, but uh, no, I'm good. most most hilariously disappointing performance in week one. Should I give you options, or you just want to roll some out? Oh, I mean, I, I'm I'm I mean, I got I wrote down Deshaun Watson. Oh yeah, uh, Carolina's whole team, the Carolina. Giants' whole team, and um, Kirk Cousins and the Bengals. That's who I wrote down. Well, definitely a. Definitely a disappointment on the Bengals. And we said they would beat the Patriots by 31 points without Jamar Chase. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> I know who's getting paid next week. Jamar Chase. <laughs> or or Gerard Mayo. Yeah, right. Because he came up with his first victory, right, as a head coach. Good for him. Shout out yeah. to them. And, and not starting Drake May. They didn't start Drake May. They didn't put the rookie out there. He didn't get beat up. They, they went right. with what, probably Jacoby Brissett won the first game. Yeah, good for the yeah, a lot of ground and pound and smart defense and you know Stevenson's good for ground and pound. So there you he go. He looks like he's a little bit stronger, maybe not as quick, but it looks stronger. Ground and pound, ground and pound. Got to stop him now. So yeah, yeah good right? for them. Yeah, shout out Patriots for getting a victory. I was blown for away. For real. I mean, I hope they lose sixteen in a row, but like, good for them. Deshaun Watson. That's. I mean, that's starting to become just like some joke of some weirdness I yeah he he's in trouble to, again he needs to go to some non-extradition country and just take his 200 million and build a hotel or something right deshaun watson's hotel of hands <laughs> it's just all his hands grabbing bag by deshaun grabbing bag. he's touching everybody it's a weirdo kind of place you know what i mean where all the sickos go i don't know that guy's gonna get in trouble again i, I can't believe it so Cleveland, what a what a it's the best thing for the Browns. I mean, he's just obviously terrible. Some of his throws he missed by like seven yards. And it's not like there was a wrong route. It was like, I see you. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, why'd you throw it over there then? <laughs> what? You're obviously throwing it to me. It's yeah, it's no, me. he looked bad. He was one of the worst looking quarterbacks in week one. Him and Bryce Young, probably. Yeah, it's a feel bad for Carolina and the whole thing there. You, I heard you can get a ticket or two tickets for a dollar and eighty cents to go to a Carolina Panther game. Like we should get on a plane so, and so just we could f- fly. We could fly to Carolina, buy a ticket, then cheaper than we could watch a game here. And yeah, San Fran. Yeah, that's crazy. Do, do, yeah, shit. Probably get drunk, have a great time. <laughs> no doubt. And get home, and it'd be cheaper than going to one Niner game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ridiculous. We're that's going. Where- that's, that's where the world's come to. Well, yeah. if we get a free weekend, we'll do it. We'll just fly to Carolina real fast to watch a dollar eighty <laughs> game. We'll just look online. Here's tickets for two dollars and forty cents. Get both. Boom. Fly out there. <laughs> Love you know it. what though? The license fee and the and the transfer fee it'd be like three hundred dollars for the tickets. They still get you. They suck. Yeah. What do they do? Oh yeah. Um, Mike Tomlin is God. Mike Let's Tomlin is possibly the closest thing to god on the planet earth since that man can... could that man could throw me and you out there and we'd probably still like win a game well we'd have a fun time we... well... <laughs> until we've had to box somebody well yeah or until somebody hit us or like got close to us we're like hey don't touch me dude <laughs> hey and tomlin i trust man i and... pray to tomlin at night sometimes yeah you pray to Tomlin, not, and I'm not religious. <laughs> That's awesome. I should start praying to Tomlin. <laughs> Dear for Heavenly Tomlin, it works sometimes. <laughs> I mean, if it worked ever, I'd be happy. <laughs> if I did it every night and it just worked once, I'd be like, dude, because I've prayed to other people, you know. <laughs> so I'm just looking for one. Uh, what is the next topic? College I don't know. Football? You want to talk Ohio, Pates, Ohio State, Penn State a little bit? Oh, man. Let's talk about the embarrassment that is Penn State. You beat Bowling Green by seven points. What are you trying the undefeated not to win? Bowling Green. Huh? The undefeated Bowling Green. Just still shouldn't give the ninth 
the number yeah, nine we were team in the by, country. We were favored by 35. It was kind of an embarrassment. Uh, yeah. I don't know what our defense was trying to do. It looked like uh, <clears throat> trying something like let's not stop the run. And like it didn't work. Nope. Well, I mean, it worked. We didn't stop the run. No. They were running all of you. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Which, yeah, I, I felt mean like I saw Michigan I blame myself. tromped on by Texas. And I was like, yay, Michigan got tromped on by Texas. And then I saw Bowling right. Green fence that I was like. Right. <laughs> it was like a one point game with like a quarter left or something. I'm like, oh, what's going God. on here? This is insane. You won. Yeah, no one else in the Big Ten looks good. Oregon looks like shite. They're so undefeated, but they don't look great. Uh, yeah, I would say it looks like the cream of the crop. When you say Oregon and say Big Ten to me, I just... Yeah, USC hasn't lost yet either, but we got them in two weeks. We'll take care of their asses. Yeah, another weird Big Ten rivalry starting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we get UCLA, USC back-to-back. As a Penn State fan, that's... I'm like, is that the bowl game? Very confusing. No. 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 It's you paying against your interdivision rival, USC. <laughs> That's right. So, hey, yeah. I, I can't wait to play USC and UCLA. I'm being Fun excited. Time. You know, you, we could go down for a game now, you know, if there was at USC or UCLA. You just got it. It's like a. Uh, yeah, too bad. Wait, Cal went to. Oh, they went to the ACC, didn't they? They went to the Cal ACC. And Stanford. They're like a half mile away. They'd be way easy, but that'd be a tough game to get into. I'm sure Buckeye Ohio Buckeye USC tickets aren't cheap. And I'm sure Penn State USC tickets are cheap. It'd probably be cheaper to go to UCLA. What about Washington? We can go to Washington, right? Yeah. Easy. It's like yeah. an hour and forty minute flight. Yeah, we play to- Washington this year for sure. Yeah, you that's easy trip. That's the ticket you look for is the Washington tickets. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. That's better. That's yeah. I'd way, way better. Than, USC is <clears throat> probably we a difficult had this conversation. That's perfect. Yeah. So that's not bad. <laughs> Washington would be way easier. Um, Ohio State, man, just all three quarterbacks looked good. <laughs> you get to see them when you're winning fifty six to nothing against Western Vermont, Massachusetts, yeah. University of Michigan, Pennsylvania. I hate State. seeing all your freshman guys that run four twos i'm like god damn it i gotta play that guy next year shit i mean now these it's like wow these guys are everybody did well every quarterback after will uh, the howard kid they were all five for five two for two 60 yards 80 yards touchdown all right so out of out of all of them who who are you gonna throw into the heisman thing because our heisman guys last week kind of sucked it up this week well, definitely wasn't anybody from Colorado because Travis Hunter, just, kind of a bust. Kind of a bust. Um, My boy T Mac from Arizona went from 11 and 300 to a uh, three for 11. That's so he's a significant out. drop off. Yeah, right now there's just a lot of quarterbacks. We got the Ole Miss quarterback, Jackson. We got. Uh, Obviously, Texas quarterback. From Alabama struggled this week. Alabama Man, did not. Uh, that, that game was actually the funnest game I watched. It was yeah. like within one point in the third quarter. And then I went and had to like make a few beers or something. Turned around. It was 42 to 20. So I was like, oh, my God. Oh, you know. You play Got out of control Powerhouse. quick. Yeah. But yeah. Kid from Alabama. But yeah, he's I know this young receiver for Ohio State. He keeps putting up decent numbers. I mean, if he keeps it up, I don't know if you can put him in a Heisman race. That's tough. The quarterback yeah. from Ohio State, I mean, eventually he's going to start playing bigger teams. He's going to have to show up and put oh, up yeah. big it's, numbers. It's super early. But, I mean, yeah. a lot of players have played good teams. So, it's kind of it's getting off to a more interesting start than normal. I think we should keep everyone updated week to week on the Heisman chase. Sure. Well, when Colorado Hunter got just Colorado, Nebraska killed that whole thing right now. He's going to have to have a couple uh, of good how weeks. How fun is it to see Dion just like make excuses in the post game? It's so good. Yeah. Offensive line. Every, anytime they go up against a team with a good defensive line, it's, it's bad for them. It really, like, they just don't have, they have talent, but they just don't have all the talent they need. I mean, that guy got sacked like, 
eight, nine, ten. I don't know. He was running for his life, Mr. Sanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, and the other Sanders had surgery. Shiloh got hurt. So yeah, bad week for the Sanders is is is. Sanders is is one. He's out three weeks. They said maybe more for Shiloh. So it's not hurting his draft stock. He's still uh, he's still, uh, you know. He's six one one ninety five. Unless his bones are brittle, then he's the perfect size for NFL cornerback. So yeah, he's fine. He's not. I don't think he's worried about it. So the son, though, man, at quarterback, he's got to have a good showing, man, or he's just going to be another Malik Willis or. You know, I know, but when, when he gets sacked, what on average about twelve times a game is tough, man. <laughs> it's tough. They showed uh, I mean. Colorado bo- offensive line stats. They're out of 333 schools in the, in the country, they're worst, worst, and second to worst in like pass block, rush block, and keeping your quarterback alive. <laughs> See, that's bad. That's bad for shot. Or uh, yeah, for Shador. It's bad for Shador, and it's bad for just them. They're not going to win anything. So yeah. I don't care if they go to 12 teams. He ain't going to be one of the 12. So no. yeah, probably never, never, no. Not going to get enough there. Not in Colorado. Kids don't go to the pros coming out of Colorado, except for his two sons. All right. Yeah. What are you doing after it. that? <laughs> so uh, you got any performers of the uh, week there? Yeah, I thought today was all going to be about U.S. men's national team. You know, us crushing New Zealand. And? But we suck. We suck. We need Mauricio Pochettino. And we did. We finally signed uh, our coach. But, yeah, so since none of those guys, even though Pulisic scored a goal, can be my performer of the week, I'm going to give it to Trinity Rodman out of nowhere because she scored a banger. And uh, Magic Johnson is now one of the owners, and she went up and did a dunk celebration right on Magic. It was dope. It's, it was more about the celebration than the goal, but whatever. Uh, You know, my performer of the week is, it is actually, and this is, you know, listen – I wasn't really thrilled about football this week. Um, I could say myself on FanDuel because I crushed it, you know. But Yes, never listen to me on FanDuel. No, I crushed you. But that's okay. I mean, we were close in that game because we had four out of the same five players. It's just that I had Jackson and you had some receiver that was going to get something, but not a lot. Um, But um, I got to go with Mr. Yamamoto coming back to the mound tonight for the Dodgers. And, and having a, a decent showing um, because every time I turn around, I look at the phone. It's just a Dodgers pitcher going to the IL or the IR, or wherever they are, where they're not going to be playing. So yeah. to have one come back and, and, and pitch. And uh, not get hurt in his first game back. That's yeah. Fine. A small note. There is a clip of Otani pitching and, um, so, I thought, so watch out playoff guys because the Tani's just gonna hit a couple home runs and strike you out in the ninth inning. Nice. I, if he can come back for the World Series playoffs to pitch, I don't know. I mean, his rehab apparently is moving along since he is now on a mound. And the pitch I saw him throw didn't look like he had any, it lo- didn't look like he was hurt. I mean, oh, it yeah, looked like they, he threw that once pretty they hard get to the mound. That That's usually pretty close. Well, like real close. That means like bullpen sessions are near. Well, he's on the – he was spotted. Well, I saw a video of On a mound somewhere. <laughs> on a mound somewhere. It looked like it was in the Dodgers dug or Yeah, I'm place. sure. Yeah. So so I'm excited for that. So shout out to those two guys for getting back to the mound and closer to getting to the mound. That can only help the Dodgers. Uh, what are you excited for? Are you excited for anything? The games this week kind of suck. Yeah, I mean, uh, Thursday night. Buffalo, Miami should be fun as long as uh, Tyreek Hill's not being detained by anyone on the way there. I believe he um, should not be. No. Yeah, no. What did keep I write his, down? Keep your window oh. down, Tyreek. Just leave it down, Bubba. Man, it's too hot. You need air conditioning in Miami Dade, baby. No, I understand <laughs> that, but let the just let that shit end. <laughs> and throw your yeah, back no. up. I'm work. looking forward to uh hopefully sneaking someone off the waiver wire tomorrow because I lost both weeks. Or both leagues. I'm hoping to get two players tonight myself. I'm in trouble, yeah. Yeah, I'm in trouble too. So I could use a couple <laughs> little moves. And I, I think I'm in last place. So I definitely am first to 
to take. So I get my first player. So you don't get Williamson. And then no, um, I'm hoping to get my second player. So well, I'm going to take him. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, FB. I'm the goo. Uh, I'm FB. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Fucker, I hope I get all those players. You suck. <laughs>